Uh, UNESCO is, is basically an international um, organisation that fosters creativity, um, education, science, um, sharing of knowledge, uh, sharing of culture throughout the world. The Creative Cities Network itself was an offspring of an earlier UNESCO initiative called the Global Alliance for Cultural Diversity, I think that's how it was, which was drafted by UNESCO in 2002 and its aim was, and I'll quote here, promoting the social, economic and cultural well-being of cities in both the developed and the developing world to foster cultural diversity and partnerships across seven creative strands, which were folk art and craft, design, film, gastronomy, which sounds pretty cool, media, arts, music and of course literature. And um, this was a rich vein of global creativity ready to be tapped and it sort of feeds into you know, that whole thing of encouraging the fundamentals of humanity, what it, is, what it means to be human, what's important and, and understanding, cultural understanding across these um, artistic endeavours if you like. It all started way back with uh, Edinburgh, uh, which was the first city of literature in 2004, I believe. Within that broader context of the sister city relationships that Dunedin has uh, throughout the world, and it has three uh, active uh, sister city relationships, Edinburgh being one of them, Shanghai and Otaro being the other two, um, one of the opportunities that, um, that uh, came across my desk was that I saw that uh, Edinburgh was the, the world's first UNESCO city of literature and uh, in many ways Dunedin had, uh, had a, similar, a similar history and similar background, although not nearly as long as, uh, as Edinburgh. And uh, we also had a very rich and, uh, and strong uh, literary history and, and from, that, from that, I suppose, that, um, that perception came the idea that possibly with Edinburgh being uh, the world's first city of literature, perhaps Dunedin could also be a city of literature. And that was the germ of the idea that, that really led to the, the whole process that has since unfolded. It all started in 2009 when um, I raised the idea with, uh, with my manager within the council and suggested, hey, here's a great idea, perhaps Dunedin could also be a city of literature just like Edinburgh. You know, Dunedin had something special and, uh, and this was an opportunity, a strategic opportunity that the city could, could build on, that, on, it, on its strengths. So we're only a small city but, but we had such strength and such, such wealth, if you like, cultural wealth in our literary history and our literary present. It needs to go back a little bit and be with Bernie and Liz and Noel who um, was also involved as the they, they were the big three to start with. I was invited to attend a conference in Edinburgh, a city of literature, and um, I wasn't able to attend that conference but I, I asked uh, one of my key staff, Liz Knowles, whether she would be able to go not only to attend the conference but also to find out more about the city of literature. I was involved because my wonderful manager at the time, Benny Hawke, uh, was invited to go to Edinburgh uh, to a global library conference and unfortunately for him and fortunately for me I uh, was able to attend this conference. I first got involved in 2010 when I was on a fellowship um, in Scotland. Uh, Edinburgh it was the first UNESCO creative city and the first creative city of literature. Um, there I met Liz Knowles at a library conference where the UNESCO creative cities were being discussed. I met with the director of the Edinburgh City of Literature Trust, Ali Bowden, and explored the concept of Dunedin as a city of literature and how Edinburgh um, used their designation and how they uh, became a world-class city of literature. Um, as the first city, Edinburgh had a mandate to uh, support all uh, prospective bidders to the city process. There were some wonderful possibilities for Dunedin to be involved in this if we were able to gain that status. So Liz uh, attended the conference um, and gathered a, a wealth of information about um, about what Edinburgh was doing, how it was working and um, and then we, we, we put our heads together and, um, and ultimately put a report up to our City Council asking for formal approval to explore this concept a little bit further. I thought it was a wonderful opportunity. Um, I didn't actually, didn't actually know much about it until it was explained to me. And then I could see um, the potential. The support of the Dunedin City Council has been critical. Uh, and, I, and I think, uh, you know, from our Mayor down through the, to the staff and that, uh, there's been just consistent support for this and for making it work. 
it was very well received, uh, and I think from memory it was uh, unanimous um, uh, support from the council to uh, to explore the idea further. Uh, clearly, the council wanted to have uh, some measure of confidence that this wasn't just a, an idea that had been cooked up in the library, um, but that actually had a level of community support. So we were given endorsement to uh, to basically go forth and uh, and check with the community whether there was uh, an, a level of support and interest in this whole project. So that was in July 2000. And 10 uh, that uh, we first got that approval and so we, we spent probably the best part of a year um, talking with various people at a local level at a national level we uh, we talked with people from the New Zealand Commission for UNESCO we talked from people from the New Zealand Book Council the National Library and uh, and what we found uh, as a result of talking to a broad range of people that there was a, a huge and, and unanimous level of support that um, that Dunedin actually had quite a lot of the attributes of a world city of literature so we were encouraged by that process and we, um, we then in, I think it was around July, August 2011, put another report back to our council seeking this time a formal, uh, presenting the, the results of our, our year's work uh, in checking whether there was support, but also then seeking support to actually take it to the next level and, and lodge a formal application. And that support was also unanimously provided by the council. We started doing the research, I guess, first of all, to prove to ourselves um, that Dunedin had the capacity, um, the history, heritage and the capacity to be a UNESCO city of literature. What we did was we, we not only talked to a broad range of individuals, uh, be they individual poets, writers, um, illustrators, uh, playwrights, and we had um, all overwhelming support from from the actual creative, uh, the creators of, of, of the literature. But we also approached a range of institutions. So we talked to the other libraries. We talked particularly to the University of Otago. We talked to the Dunedin Athenaeum, and and a broad range of institutions. So we actually felt that we had not only individual support from the creators and the writers, but we also had institutional support from the uh, the key literary related institutions. And that included bookshops, the Otago University Press. Um, there, there was really a very broad uh, base of support for this whole concept. One group that it's really important to acknowledge is Transforming Dunedin. Uh, they were a, um, a wide cross-section of the art sector in uh, Dunedin, uh, comprising I think up to 27 different groups. And they started almost at the same time, but um, individually and um, collectively apart from the City of Literature, to develop an arts and culture policy for Dunedin and I guess what that told us was that there was widespread support across a broad cross-section of the arts community and so we knew that this was a grassroots or a flax roots movement uh, within Dunedin rather than something that was imposed by the city. And the more that we explored, the more we realised that we didn't know all the stories that Dunedin had to tell and how exciting it was for Dunedin to be known as a city of literature. So the process around exploring um, our literary heritage and what was happening in the city was very exciting to be a part of. That took quite some time. Uh, the more that we looked about uh, what made Dunedin the creative city of literature, uh, the more that we found. Um, then of course in 2013 the United Nations itself put a um, moratorium on bids. And that gave us the opportunity I think, um, especially as we were doing it on uh, pretty economically, it gave us the opportunity to uh, refine what we had, to consolidate what we had so that when they opened the door again we were ready. So we used that opportunity to do other stuff like setting up the website and just you know, collating all the information we had. As part of our uh, application process we decided early on that we wanted to build a website to create and curate all our content uh, so that we could showcase what Dunedin has to the world and it was very enlightening to be able to take all these new images, to tell all these new um, ways of exploring the city through our literary heritage and the heroes that we, that we have here in the city. If it wasn't for the writers and the people that read what they write, um, we wouldn't have had a bid. Um, so that, that, that's historical as well, it goes back um, to the First Peoples, uh, Māori, um, Kaitahu in um, Otapoti, Dunedin, um, and carried on through um, um, colonisation, through um, a series of contemporary writers from Thomas Bracken 
uh, sort of historical writers like Thomas Bracken, who wrote the national anthem, um, through uh, the support of people like Charles Brash, through the uh, literary journal Landfall, up to contemporary writers. Well, this was some of the depth of Dunedin's application, that not only did it have a vibrant, um, present uh, literary culture, it had a very rich history, everyone from Charles Brash to uh, Janet Frame to James K. Baxter, and uh, the list is a very long one. It would always start with people. Um, uh, hey tangata, hey tangata, hey tangata. Um, they are the most important thing in the world and they're what sustained uh, literature. So th this is, I think, everyone from uh, writers themselves, but also the very important readership that grew and developed um, around New Zealand literature. Um, but also all those other people that made writing possible, such as publishers, editors, uh, newspapers, the Otago Daily Time, the last um, independent newspaper left in New Zealand, um, through to you know, a range of other creative activities, including um, the influence of uh, literature on music uh, from within Dunedin, and I guess the importance of film, people like uh, the Saki brothers and their uh, short novel, uh, novella, uh, Two Little Boys, which became a film. And one, for me, really interesting part of the whole development process was um, at, at a particular point we felt and we certainly uh, uh, realised that we needed to, to, I suppose, bring together a, a broad group of stakeholders and not only meet on a, on a one-off basis or a, a single conversation, but to meet on a regular basis so that we could, we could develop ideas and develop a, a sort of a, a momentum, if you like, uh, for the development of the, um, the bid. But also that period also gave us the... the opportunity to engage with particularly Edinburgh, which was the original UNESCO Creative City of Literature, uh, and build a relationship with them, with Ali in Edinburgh. Uh, so we were well and truly ready. Because the process for bidding to become a city of literature, the new process, was um, quite limiting, you know, we had to try and think outside the square of how we were going to showcase what Dunedin City has. As we got into um, unpacking the layers of Dunedin's literary scene and I have to say as an aside to that as we got into that and Liz was wonderful at, at um, pulling together all of the different aspects of Dunedin's literary scene. So, uh, so there were a few things that we, we, we did. We created the Dunedin City of Literature website and social media channels and also a booklet to tell our story and some video clips. So they were some of the things that we wanted to be able to utilise as part of uh, the wider application to UNESCO. The key thing that, that we all tried to put together was to try and filter down to Dunedin to 10 key fast facts for how Dunedin is a city of literature. And so it really made us all think about what were the 10 key features that we have as a city of literature. And as part of uh, the brief for the UNESCO Creative Cities is to be able to show how creative you are in a city, not only through the theme of literature, but through using literature to tell many different stories through our music and through our theatre. So we realise that Dunedin has a number of ways in which to be able to uh, tell our literary heritage and to tell our stories to the world. And it's amazing just when you when you start doing that and look at not just the history but what's happening currently in Dunedin and as far as literature and literacy go, it is amazing. There are just there is so much depth in the city, at this hive of quiet industry that happens. Um, people do it because they love it, not because there's necessarily a return to them. It's it's a giving out, not a taking. So part of this it just sort of exemplifies, if you like, the the strength of the concept of, of a city of literature and the fact that there is a, a strong foundation for that within the city. In sort of late 2013, um, we learned that applications were being opened up again and we were able to submit an application, but it had to be submitted by March 2014. So, you know, we were confronted with the holiday season, Christmas, all of those things happening, but this 40,000 word application was due to be um, submitted and then we had the whole the whole thing read and edited by Lisa McCauley who was wonderful who came in at the last minute with all of this information just to make sure that it was seamless and smooth and that it met the criteria which it did and then with bated breath and the push of a button by the mayor we were terrified that you know the, the email wouldn't go or something would happen but it did and off it went to UNESCO in Paris and we 
then knew we would have to wait until the end of the year before we would have any idea of whether we were successful. There was no way that we were going to have any progress reports or anything like that. And we got to November and then we heard that there was going to be an, an announcement from UNESCO at the beginning of December. So of course it was in Paris and we weren't sure what time uh, we were going to find out whether we had uh, been successful in our bid. So uh, we waited and waited and then of course slept and waited. And uh, in the early hours of the morning we realised that we had uh, become a UNESCO City of Literature. And we had become the 11th City of Literature under the UNESCO Creative Cities Network, which was fabulous. So we had a celebration at uh, Toito Otago Settlers Museum and there were a lot of our, our readers and writers in the community came, stakeholder group, the mayor, uh, councillors, we had the UNESCO National Commission arrived and it was wonderful and we had musicians playing, we had poetry readings and it was a really exciting time and continues to be to this day. Then the work started really, suddenly we realised that we had this um, this wonderful thing happening and the full implication of it hit home really. We suddenly had all these congratulations coming from other cities of literature and saying and by the way we've got this this and this um, project on and we would like you to be a part of it. So we having been successful with this we suddenly realised that we needed to gather together the infrastructure which we talked about but hadn't done it well we couldn't do anything with because we didn't know whether we were going to be successful so then we sort of went into the process of identifying how we might um, take this forward and make it really important for the city in the long term so that it's a, it becomes an enduring, um, I, I see it as a legacy to the city. While we, we collectively uh, you know, were able to foster this, this idea that we could become a city of literature and then it became a reality, um, I think the, the the, the really interesting piece now is, is what, we, what do we do with it? How do we develop that? How do we grow it? How do we, I suppose, uh, enthuse other people with the, uh, the idea that, that we are a city of literature and, and how do we leverage that?